Hey everyone, the name is Ozzy Flowell. Did you know a DLC at first didn't mean new content you had to purchase the experience, but rather just content updates in general? Portal 2 was made in an era of the gaming industry where this was very much the case. As a result, its DLCs are included by default when you buy Portal 2 from Steam. These DLCs are Peer Review, a DLC of a co-op that includes a new art therapy course set after the canon events of the Human Vault Discovery, and the Perpetual Testing Initiative, being the addition of an in-game puzzle maker that's easy and intuitive to use. This led to an endless supply of new portal puzzles to play, all easily and readily accessible from the Steam Workshop. Internally, Peer Review is referred to as DLC 1, while the Perpetual Testing Initiative is DLC 2. So naturally, you think these two were the only DLCs ever released in Portal 2. But that would be wrong. While Peer Review and Perpetual Testing Initiative are in fact official DLCs for Portal 2 produced by Valve, there is another set of official DLCs not produced by Valve, and technically had releases prior to, during, and after Valve's Portal 2 DLCs. So let's start from the very beginning of the story. We're going to go back to 2008 to make heads and tails with everything. Enter Sixth Sense Entertainment and Razer. There's also Intel, but shh. These two companies decided to collaborate on a piece of hardware that at first would be named the Sixth Sense True Motion, but they realized that name sucked and would rename it to the Razer Hydra. This was a motion controller for PC, and the two companies boasted about its motion control capabilities to be beyond that of the Wii, as it uses a weak magnetic field to detect absolute position and rotation of the controllers. Now, while the Razer Hydra was made for the PC, it needed some support to make it intriguing to the masses. So in their search for gaming corporation to support the Razer Hydra technology, the two companies approached Valve as one of the candidates. Valve always being open to support any random hardware content that comes their way, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, said why the hell not, and actively began to work with the companies on adding Razer Hydra support to their titles. Team Fortress 2, Left 4 Dead 2, Half-Life 2, and Portal 1 were all said to be part of this but a demonstration at the Consumer Electronics Show of January 2010 showing the Razer Hydra in use. Now, this is pure speculation since companies tend to be pretty, you know, quiet about their internal communications, so take this all with a grain of salt. My best guess is that by some point in 2010, Sixth Sense and Razer proved to Valve that they were more than capable of developing something on Source to then act as a hot exclusive app that the Razer Hydra needed. After all, they couldn't sell a gaming peripheral solely based off of what game supported it. It just so happened that Valve was pretty much at the tail end of Portal's development around the same time this realization hit. Now, the company pair actually created a new mechanic that they implemented to Portal 1 back in 2009, being the ability to physically reach objects through the air. Razer was quite proud of this specific mechanic, having showcased it a few times, and Valve, too, seemed quite intrigued by it. With the idea of some unique DLC that would ship after Portal 2 releases, and the guaranteed good press about Portal 2, it seemed like a genius move. Now, Portal 2 released in April 2011, but these talks were happening in mid to late 2010, which should immediately spike everyone's interest, because, that's right, Sixth Sense began developing Portal 2 DLC before the actual game came out. Valve gave the companies access to an early software development kit, or SDK, of Portal 2 and let them at it. During the Consumer Electronics Show of January 2011, also known as CES, the Razer booth showed off Portal 2 in use for the Razer Hydra, but not just Portal 2. They were showing off the Sixth Sense motion pack for the first time ever. Portal 2 would be slated to come bundled with the Razer Hydra, and copies of Portal 2 gained through the Hydra would feature its own unique levels and mechanics that could only be done by the motion sensing controllers. People at CES 2011 were able to try out a near finalized version of the controllers and a quick demo level. This version of Portal 2 was in fact a near final version that might be from prior to the content lock that Valve's gonna put into place, meaning that this is footage from the pre-tail era of development. While the game was basically ready at this point, Portal 2 was clearly still in the final stages of development if you know what to look for. But in all in all, it's pretty much the final game. The general reception of the Sixth Sense motion pack demo from what I can gather was... Cool. Fast forward a few months later to Portal 2's release in April of that year, and Razer announced that the Razer Hydra will be releasing that June, with pre-orders opening in May, priced at about 140 US dollars, and come bundled with Portal 2 and exclusive pack levels. Let's fast forward one final time for now and finally reach the release date. 
The Razer Hydra was officially released on June 16th, 2011, alongside a Porto 6 Sense motion pack. The motion pack released a pretty positive reception to those who got to play it, though there was quite a lot of people confused as to the lack of plot in levels, since it became a game staple of the Portal franchise with the leaks of Portal 2. Now this is where I had to clear up the most confusing part about Portal 2's relationship with Six Sense. There are three different, but similar, Six Sense related products of Portal 2. So let me explain this real quickly, because people have still got these mixed up. So, there's the Portal 2 Six Sense Motion Pack, which was released via the DLC system in June 2011. The Motion Pack was delisted from Steam after Razer discontinued the Hydro Controllers. But the source of confusion comes from the presence of the Portal 2 Six Sense Perceptual Pack. This is a free game you can download from Steam that utilizes the Sense 3D camera. This was released on the 20th of September 2013. The confusion stems from the fact that this pack contains all the original Motion Pack levels, insert asterisks here, and seven new levels that made the Sense 3D camera in mind. These two are not the same thing despite that. They have unfortunately similar logos, but just keep note of the wording difference here. Motion pack, perceptual pack. Two different things, okay? Both are being covered in this video, so don't mix them up. The third Sixth Sense related product is Portal 2 in Motion, which thankfully has a more unique name. But this is just a repackage of the Sixth Sense motion pack made to be used for the PlayStation Move on the PS3. This was released on November 6, 2012, a staggering year and a half after the original motion pack did. It is practically identical in all shape and form except for the control method, so whatever I say about the motion pack should apply to in motion as well. Now that I've got that sorted, how about I go play the Sixth Sense motion pack? There is a fan made fix that makes it compatible to play utilizing VR controllers, which would be a more cost effective option and is a more widely accessible piece of hardware that is easy to come by, or do I? Do you take me for a normal person? So this is the Rage of Hydra, and yeah, I genuinely did go out of my way to track down one and get it for myself for this video. I gotta say, these controllers feel great to hold. They were absolutely designed to being ergonomic in mind. And yeah, while they are wired controllers, it actually didn't detract from the experience of using them. It all just felt very natural to use, which is incredibly surprising. I did try the Razer Hydra and some other Valve titles that had support added to them, but a lot of the games I tried have lost their Hydra support. It's been 10 years since the Hydra release after all. A lot of the support has degraded as time has gone on. Similar case to the Oculus Rift support that these games originally had. Here's some footage I found of the Razer Hydra being used on Team Fortress 2 to demonstrate its use in other games. While we're on this topic of the Hydra being used in other games, it actually released with support for over 121 different games. Now this is primarily a Portal and Valve focused YouTube channel, so I'll list the names you expect to hear. Keep in mind the level of support here varies between games. Alien Swarm, Half-Life 1, Half-Life 2, Left 4 Dead 1, Left 4 Dead 2, Portal 1, Portal 2, and Team Fortress 2. But I'm not just gonna list Valve games here. Honestly, you should just go read the list on Wikipedia's page for the Razer Hydra. What I'm showing you though is that this piece of hardware was obviously more than just some Portal 2 levels. But let's toss this all aside because I know what you all are really here for. Let's start checking out those Portal 2 levels. We'll begin with the motion pack since it was released first. I'll be using a fan made fixed version of the motion pack DLC that ensures it functions as normal, as an update to Portal 2 irreversibly broke 6 and stuff on versions going forward. You'll still need to raise a hydra to play this though, you'll see why. So, anyways, the motion pack gives us three new options to play. A tutorial, the motion pack itself, and an advanced motion pack. The tutorial is where we'll be going first. The tutorial begins with us in an overgrown room. A pincer drops us the portal gun and we grab it off the ground. Immediately, you can see the effects of the Razor Hydra here. This is what is known as free aim, and essentially lets us aim more precisely in game without the need for the camera to be constantly following our every little move and making us motion sick when jittering. This tutorial first locks our view so we can get used to free aiming before then unlocking the view and allowing us to look to the sides. Eventually, once we have verified we know how to free aim using the Hydra, we finally get to move around. The Hydra utilizes the left stick for walking if you're curious. After crossing to an office hallway that's totally not shamelessly pasted in for a main campaign Portal 2 map, the motion pack continues to familiarize us with the Razer Hydra by showing us how to jump. You can do this either by flicking the left controller upwards or simply pressing a button on them. Really, it's something that will depend on your preferences. I choose to use whichever is more convenient for me at a given time. After jumping over the misplaced computer tower, we arrive at a test chamber to be introduced to what yet another one of the motion pack's new mechanics, 
One to one. Look familiar? By holding any form of physics object, primarily cubes, we can reach the controller out to initiate the one to one mechanic, wherein all camera tracking is frozen and we can manipulate the object to the environment by precisely moving and rotating it to our heart's content. You can tell when the mechanic is active via the holding beam of the portal gun glowing brighter and a more intense sound being produced. Motion Pack tutorializes the one to one mechanic by having us move a cube through a hole and onto a button behind some glass. Fairly intuitive. This unlocks the exit door and we can walk right through. Obviously, I'm not going to be doing this for every single level in the Sixth Sense Motion Pack. That'd be tedious. When the tutorial finished, however, we can now move into the actual new puzzles. These are split up into identifiable sections that introduce new stuff as we see them. The first two levels on the motion pack help to make sure we really understand the one to one mechanic. An interesting feature of the Sixth Sense DLC is that buttons are modified to appear activated when a cube is above them. This helps with depth perception in figuring out where a cube is in relation to the button, making it easy to identify when it's safe to drop it. It's a genuinely underrated quality of life improvement that doesn't seem that major when watching a video. Next up, portal surfing. Portal surfing is a unique maneuver where you can grab your placed portals and drag them along the surface they're placed on, if it's large enough that is. You can also make use of the Hydra's rotation tracking capabilities to rotate the portals, unlocking new puzzle potential that normally can't be done in an elegant way with, with the traditional keyboard and mouse format. The motion pack uses it to create scenarios where you must rotate your portals to reach higher locations for them, rotate lasers to reach their catchers, or my personal favourite, dragging a light bridge along with you to act as a shield against turrets. This is just awesome honestly. These feel so good to control that I'm going to be gushing over it for this whole video. The final new mechanic that Sixth Sense brought to the table is a scalable cube. Boy, these alternate Portal 2 versions just really can't help bringing in new cube types, huh? The educational version did the exact same thing with introducing the contraption cube there. Check out that video if you haven't already. Anyways, the scalable cube has something that has a fairly basic design, and when you realise what its name implies, you can see why they went for a simplistic look for the thing. The January 2011 beta build of the motion pack actually featured a more detailed scalable cube. But the beta content of Sixth Sense Portal 2 DLCs is a story for another video. Back on topic though, by using the right controller to initiate the 1 to 1 to function, you can then move the left controller by holding the LB button to basically stretch the cube depending on what axis you're facing it from. You can rotate the way you're holding the cube to stretch it across a different axis and create a big cube. There's an upper and lower limit, and yeah, lower limit. You can make the cube smaller too if you wish. It's actually required in this puzzle right here but you have to fit a cube through a broken door and onto a button. Pressing LB twice will reset the cube's size to default. The main motion pack concludes with a level that utilizes all four of these mechanics to occur a pretty cool puzzle involving the scalable cube, funnels, and light bridges as the puzzle amounts. In total, there is about seven total new levels of play for the main motion pack campaign, and they were incredibly fun to go through. These first main set of puzzles that utilize the Hydra's capabilities added up to give me a solid whole new arrow to tack onto my Portal 2 plate sound. To be honest, I spent a lot of time just staring at the environmental detail of the level, because I was deathly curious to analyze them. The puzzles though felt well worth it, they certainly felt like some of them just wouldn't feel the same without the Hydra's capabilities, in the same way that Half-Life Alex just wouldn't feel the same without VR. So remember the advanced motion pad levels I mentioned earlier? Yep, there's six of those bastards, and they tacked on another hour of playtime for me, and honestly? These were some of the best test chambers from the motion pack single player. Now these are not advanced chambers in the style of how Portal 1 did theirs, but more rather entirely new chambers that are, well, more advanced in the puzzle difficulty. They do actually follow the same structure as the normal motion pack levels, starting 1 to 1, then portal surfing, and then scaling. The advanced motion pack introduces gels into the mix around portal surfing, and actually gives us two new puzzles that use conversion gel, which is a wonderful surprise, since it's one of my favourite test elements and how much potential it has. So I'm glad that the Sixth Sense motion pack bestows upon us some new official puzzles that utilise conversion gel. Surprisingly, no final chamber here like the normal motion pack, just those two level pairs per mechanic. But I think this is made up for via the final bit of new content in the motion pack. We've only been discussing single player here, but did you know the motion pack comes with its own unique cooperative campaign that was added on later? Pairing up with my buddy Luke18033, who's using VR controllers with the aforementioned community made patch, we tackled what was known as the non-emotional manipulation course. This course was released a whole two years after the original motion pack debuted on PC, landing it on a release date of June 6, 2013. Because Portal 2 in motion on the PS3 was out at this point, it too got the co-op DLC, and it even came with cross-compatibility with the motion pack on PC, meaning that people using the PlayStation Move on the PS3 could play with people using the Razer Hydra on PC. This is not possible anymore due to servers being shut down, but it is a fascinating piece of trivia. 
Loading into the lobby, and hey, it's the DLC hub from peer review, where Valve was likely planning to add more courses for co-op via this hub. It's really cool to see it back here being, in fact, used for another DLC. You can't select the art therapy course from here since this is an entirely different map, but we can go into the non-emotional manipulation course from here. This hub actually has a secret to it that was added for the Sixth Sense DLCs, but I won't go over that just yet. The non-emotional manipulation DLC adds 6 new co-op levels, and these are some of the biggest brain teasers I've ever played from official release Valve certified puzzles. These really got my brain thinking about how to utilize new mechanics in a cooperative environment. Certainly something I wasn't expecting going into this thing. The actual levels are somehow the worst looking official portal levels I've ever seen. These are incredibly basic textured flesh chambers haphazardly slammed into the reservoirs that the art therapy course utilizes, and are incredibly simple looking. Some of these levels are even bigger than the reservoirs themselves, meaning they have to carve out new sections of the map just to fit all the test chambers. Good god. The puzzles in this co-op course are actually really darn cool at times despite the lack of visuals. There's one where you must pull yourself a light bridge that's coated with gel in order to get your partner across the goop here, which is something that would be downright impossible to do in normal Portal 2 with how light bridges work. I will fault this campaign for having some really weird puzzle ideas, like this part where you and your partner must time a jump to switch the spot your portal's in. Me and Luke were playing this with a latency difference of 300, so this section certainly was fun. Though there is also this section where you must surf your partner across a treacherous gap where most of the walls were lined with crushes that can impale you. This was actually really neat. Interestingly, this course seems to lack any form of usage of the scalable cube. It utilizes all the other mechanics perfectly fine, so it's weird that the object that arguably is the most recognized part of the motion pad got no appearance here. This wouldn't even be a technical limitation. Once me and Luke finished the course, we played around the hub to test things out, and yeah, the scalable cubes work perfectly fine. I guess they just couldn't think of any puzzles that would have utilized it. Recall how I said this hub had a secret? Yeah, Luke discovered it accidentally while no clipping. But if you shoot a portal up through this tube, where normally in the co-op DLC hub it'd be where you get back to the main hub, you can actually access a bowling minigame. That's right, all those turret bowling maps everyone made? Obsolete. This right here is the, a real official deal, an actual Valve approved turret bowling easter egg. You play this minigame by throwing edgeless safety cubes like bowling balls using the 1 to 1 capabilities of Razor Hydra. They spawn from a hole on the left side, and the button resets the pins of the minigame. Incredibly amusingly, if you step over the line, you activate the rule breaker response for the turrets and they all instantly annihilate you on the spot. Fantastic. With that, we've wrapped up the analysis of the contents in the motion pack. Anything I've said about it basically carries over to PS3's Portal 2 in Motion DLC as well. So let's move on to the final piece of content we'll be covering, the perceptual pack, the thing that everyone confuses for the motion pack. Remember, totally different things here. Motion pack uses the Razor Hydra, and the perceptual pack uses the Sense 3D camera. Oh, and the perceptual pack was released on September 20th, 2013, making it the last piece of official new playable Portal 2 content to release. I couldn't actually find a Sense 3D camera on sale for me to purchase and use for this video, but luckily with our old friends Control C and Control V, I can do a little bit of... And here we are. Now, while I will be using a Hydra to play these levels, these levels were intended to act as tutorial stages for using the Sense 3D camera. So here's what I figured out about how this would have controlled. Playing with the Sense 3D camera is horrible, really. You're having to play an FPS game with what is basically an Xbox 360 Connect the size of a small webcam when you monitor it to replace your mouse. It's no wonder the seven new tutorial levels of the perceptual pack brings to the table all happen to be linear railroad experiences wherein your view is locked to one direction early. All the six sets mechanics are ported over, but doing them is mapped to the way you move your hand around, and in some cases, you have to reach over to the keyboard itself and press keys. Or quite possibly the funniest method, having to speak out loud to control the game using voice commands. Shoot orange! Yeah! These levels are basically crack infused condensed version of the main motion pack, where it still hits a lot of the main beats, but like this. The visual style is an anomaly in of itself. It seems to be set in an art therapy reservoir once more, but completely overgrown? Certainly a unique visual style, I'll give it that, a valve certified one at that, but come on, the entire rest of the reservoir that you can't even see is still here. This is just laziness at its peak. Shout out to yet another official conversion gel puzzle here by the way. Man am I glad to still see this thing being tossed around between DLCs like this in lack of any official real puzzle. Even if this puzzle is just yet another paint the room puzzle, can you tell I'm desperate? Anyways, beating all 7 perceptual tutorial levels drops you into the motion pack tutorial. 
Strangely, they seem to have edited this map. For some reason, they extended the office steaming into the test chamber because they felt like it. And to no one's surprise, it looks kind of shit. For some reason, you're then allowed to play the motion pad levels and God, this must have been awful to experience. Having to use WASD to move around while holding up a hand to act as your mouse for the camera to detect and respond to. I could not imagine playing this thing for an extended period of time. Seriously, no wonder Valve gave the perceptual pack out for complete free. All the levels are here, even the advanced ones. But the real anomaly is this new level they added seemingly only for the perceptual pack. Oh hey, it's the asterisk from earlier in the video. I suppose it was added to make there be as many advanced levels as the normal ones? Maybe this was scrapped from the original motion pack. I wouldn't doubt it considering how unfinished this looks, even for 6 cent standards. But hey, new content I suppose. I'm gonna take everything and get here. No cop levels here either surprisingly, just a big button to purchase a sense 3D camera because who knows, maybe they got desperate. Considering the perceptual pack did so poorly and to the point that people would now mix it up for the actual motion pack DLC, I classify it as one of the biggest mistakes Valve has ever allowed to release. Why this thing is still on Steam after the Sens 3D camera was discontinued, while the motion pack had its listing removed entirely, is anyone's guess. I wouldn't know, but I wish I knew why. I guess it was just that forgettable. Now there is quite a bit of beta content to actually discuss with the Sixth Sense DLCs, but I'm saving that for its own video to be in tandem with the beta content or educational version, so maybe by the time you're watching this in the future, that video will be out. Anyways, that wraps up everything I can really say about Portal 2's Sixth Sense DLCs. They're a fascinating and incredibly cool part of Valve's history that honestly is really fun to play, and has some super neat content at play. These DLCs are something that I hope get documented and proper for their preservation into the future. And with that, that marks the end of this video. Thank you all for watching, be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and support me on Patreon. We've got a lot to cover when it comes to the pieces of Portal history that everyone seems to miss. So, you want to stick around. Stay safe, you all. Peace.